and everybody that's in the chat at 11 o'clock, my wife is going to do a cube graph. We had a donation for it yesterday. So, so that should be interesting. She does not play magic. Oh, let me pop out here. Make it so we can all see the chat. I would like to play first. So this hand's not great. <clears throat> but we have a Tarmogoyf on two and a hopefully a Liliana to keep catch us up. So I think I'm gonna keep it. <clears throat> I wish I had a discard spell. But we do have a really powerful spell to keep us to catch us back up, and that's in the veil. <clears throat> but if we're playing a combo deck, we're probably in a lot of trouble to start off the morning. Alright. What is this? Okay, so spear. That's probably not terrible. Because I can just bolt, I can push it and play another tap land. Alternatively, oh, Rome, Rome or Vital, thank you. Oh, that's the auto host. So, I can traverse for a basic to grow Tarmogoyf and to make it so that I can cast Liliana the Veil eventually. But, I guess I kind of do want to do that. But I kind of want to traverse for a basic forest and then play the godless shrine take two and push this so that I can better leverage my ooze later in the game. So let's get the forest. And then we'll pass because I, I might want to push an idol on but I'm not going to take any damage. If my opponent plays like a pre-con- oh this is like the Mardu Pyromancer deck. Mike is also a little low on volume. That's weird. That is weird. Collective brutality. So now I'm just going to get rid of this. Use my mana. Um, let me get this going. Um, you know, man, I've recently been a huge fan of you and your five color shadow decks. Could you do a soul type shadow deck sometime? I was trying to put a list and I'm looking to build. I have no idea if it's good or not. Uh, send me the list, like Sigma. If I think it's, if I think it's okay, then, um, I will give it a whirl. But I actually think now we're just gonna, because I don't really want to discard any of my cards, so I don't want to play my Liliana. I do want to take this Lightning Bolt. Because, well, I, I don't really want to take this lightning bolt. Because if I take lightning bolt, and my opponent doesn't play young pyromancer, and my Tomboy goes up to, if I take collective brutality, they go bolt, pyromancer, and my Liliana doesn't do anything. I guess I'm trying to, like, be cute and not take this pyromancer when pyromancer is, like, the take. You should, uh, you should tweet it at me, Six Sigma. That's what I'm all about with you today. Um, my Facebook is exploding. My wife put up all of our wedding, or some of our wedding pictures on Facebook last night. And now it's just like going nuts. I had like 50 notifications this morning. God, don't keep trying to win souls. God, you're such a savage. Alright, so now we just go double, now we just go Who's Eat. Who's Eat's kind of mopey against this Lightning Bolt. I basically trade Ooze for Lightning Bolt, but then I kind of get rid of his best card. Alternatively, I could play Liliana, but Liliana's not going to do anything since he So yeah, I think I'm just going to go Scavenger, I'm going to go Attack first. Seven years, eat a lingering soul, then pass with a green up so that my opponent has to bolt use. Yeah, we can also eat Pyromancer, but it's still like we can't get it around bolt. Yeah, 
we can just kind of, yeah, we can just kind of harass them. We can't really, like this ooze is more of a, more of like a tempo kind of thing. To make it so we're, we keep it, because if we keep at parity with Lingering Souls, Liliana's going to be good. But if we don't keep at parity with Lingering Souls, then Liliana's not going to be good. Oh, I could have gone, that was stupid. I should have gone Swift Spear and this. Oh, they're going to Collective Brutality this? They're going to Escalate... What are the modes? They know, they know the last card in my hand. Well, this is odd. Yeah, this is a little... Slightly odd. I don't have any double white spells, so I think I just want to be, like... Super green-black. And we'll keep this Pyro. Opponent's tossing us a softball this morning. A little warm up match. So now I feel better about playing the ooze. What? Did I get to 43? Just going to opponent. Are you speaking to me, Archmage, or my opponent? Oh, that was like the best draw we had. <laughs> Alright, so let's attack. 45 viewers, we're, we're jumping up there this morning. I hope everyone's having a good time. I hope everybody is having a great New Year's. Now, I'm tempted to just edict one of these, but I think I want to get rid of whatever my opponent's last card is. Because it is going to be important to, like, I would like to be able to use this Liliana to clear out a better level. Yeah, it's a good, uh, good start to the morning. Everybody's gonna get pumped up because my wife's gonna do a cube draft in about three hours. Alright. Kind of scoops it. I find this deck to be very difficult to sideboard against. They don't really know. Because you know they have Blood Moon. So you gotta play around Blood Moon. Like the fatal pushes are good, not great. It's just a bit odd. Like Liliana's probably not really where we wanna be. I know I wanna last though. I think I want this Lingering Souls. I'm pretty sure we're looking for. Excuse me. I'm pretty sure we're looking for Tyler's Tracker. I want to cut some discard, but not all of my discard, because it is a grindy matchup, and it does turn into top decks. I think I like the brutality. Yeah, pulse is pulse is also reasonable. We just have a lot of cards that this deck's just difficult to sideboard against. I don't think I really want fatal pushes. Like, I could easily cut these Fatal Pushes and bring something in, like, Collective Brutality and Maelstrom Pulse, because, like, while discard, I want to save my discard to just hit, like, I want these Thoughtseize to say, like, Bedlam Reveler and have the rest of these say Blood Moon and then have more freedom with my uh, discard spell. So if I bring in some more removal, but then I guess the Fatal Push, taking out Fatal Push kind of, kind of blanks that. At least the Brutality kills Pyromancer and can help swing a race. So I do like Brutality. Let me see what this looks like. Um, I kind of want to bring in this Shriek Maw because we do only have three ways to kill. Oh, I guess the Pulse is like a better Shriek Maw. The pulse is traversable. It kills every creature in this deck. Cut an Inquisition for that. And I can just fetch around Blood Moon. Just be cognizant of Blood Moon. And go like this. It's uh, sideboarding against this deck is difficult. But I think this is what we're going to do. I might bring in my Liliana's back on the play. Just because the veil veil's just much better on the play, anyways. Playing Lily on the veil. Yeah, they don't run a full set of moons, but it's also like they probably won like what two or three. And that's the easiest way to lose games against this deck, in my opinion.
yeah, this hands, this hands pretty good. We can fetch a uh, forest. And we're, we're good. We need to draw a third lane anyways for our land souls. And we can kill a duder with this. Yeah, I mean, that proves this hand. This is probably getting a forest, just because I don't want to get cheesed out of the game by Blood Moon. I feel like I can definitely hang with this deck if I don't get it. Yeah, you're damn right we're going to discard Collective's Lingering Souls to Collective Vitality. Well, 40 viewers already this morning. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. My name is Dylan Hubby, and I am a sponsored streamer with the Card Hoarder Network. God, play a young pyromancer, please. I'm a sponsored streamer with the Card Hoarder Network. Yes, we can't really choose. Yeah, I mean, card for card, we're more powerful. I still think I'm probably, now I'm just going to collect a Brutality look for a discard. Just want to cast some spells. And then it's going to make my Tomagoyf large enough to survive through a Lightning Bolt next turn, which is what I'm all about. I don't know if I should nug my opponent or not. I don't really want to just toss this Lingering Souls in the graveyard in a resource-based matchup. Um, yeah, so I'm Dylan Hovey. I am a sponsored streamer with the Card Hoarder Network. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow, please hit the follow button. If you guys, uh, just being here is enough. Um, wow, this is a good hand. Uh, I'd probably just take Culligan's Command, because, like, well, actually, that's not really that bad, unless he gets, the problem is if he gets to the part of the game where he starts Culligan's Command in bed, let me finish my plug here. Um, if you guys ever want to see more of the stream, you can check my YouTube channel down below. I just got over halfway to being monetized. Um, just got halfway to being monetized, so that's good. Four souls, four the rest, three D. Oh, is my string decker not right there? Four souls, three DRS, three D. Dog breath. What do you uh? What do you mean? You talking about the no ban list we played yesterday, or? This is intense. I think I want to take Culligan's command even though it kind of feels. But alternatively, I can take Terminate, and then next turn, I can go Young Pyromancer, hit, and take Culligan's Command. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm gonna take one of these two cards next turn. Oh, the title does still say no ban list. Sorry about that. Yeah, we played no ban list yesterday. You can look at my YouTube channel, and it's there. Yeah. Yeah, my YouTube channel's got, I think we did eight, I did eight matches, eight or nine matches in no ban list modern yesterday. It was pretty fun. I think I'm gonna take Terminator. I need to like speed up my, because no matter what, my opponent's gonna get the one one off of this, and then I'm going to collect a brutality, escalate again, get the color guns command, then this Bedlam Reveler, this Shriek Mod's got this thing covered. Close the mountain, there's the looting. Ooh, that's a good line, Archmage. Which is exactly what they did. What are you doing, you're, 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 you're firing on all cylinders this morning. Look at you. Oh, good guy, Archmage. Alright, so. Incoming moon. That's okay, I mean, we can traverse for our basic if we need to, but now I think we just play out the big man. I do wish I had a way to, I mean, I also can just abrupt decay this when I need to. I think we just play out the big boy. We are going to have to deal with this Bedlam Reveler, we're going to rejuice his hand up. Mario was one of the awful matchups for blue-white, really? I guess they just... What are they, how is it? How is it bad? So oh, that's kind of gross. I guess they, they can't take Shriek Mod, so it's like they either take Decay, which doesn't do anything, Scavenging Ooze, which doesn't do anything, or Lingering Souls, which is sweet. We're Revlin. Yes, yeah, so now I'm just gonna smack this. Yeah. Cast the vote. 
smoke this thing. Yeah. Well, Reveler, I mean, this deck, like, this deck just abuses Reveler. Looks like we got ourselves uh, Siryu 1996. Thank you very much for the follow. Then next turn we can play like Tassiger Lingering Souls, which could help us. It is kind of nice that my opponent can't just straight up cast Lingering Souls. I mean, so that we're at least on the same playing field there. Like they're not going to overpower me. That's kind of annoying because they'll probably take Tassiger, which makes our like I guess our next. Our next turn isn't as clean as possible. If we couldn't play Tasker and Insult, we could play Tasker and Lose. I think I'm just going to play Lingering Souls. Because I don't know my opponent's deck list very well, and they might have a card like a Liliana Veil. Or we can just play another Tom Glory, so that's, that's pretty sweet. Tom Glory's a good card. I love me a Tom Glory. Some people ask me like why I don't play Grixis Shadow as much as I play Five Color Shadow, and I think it's just because Time Lord's not in there. Yeah, I, I I know too that I know that too, Archmage, but like this deck is weird, and I feel like it's very un, unexplored. And you, I think you easily could play Liliana in a deck with Faithless Looting, Lingering Souls, and Blood Moon in it. Yeah, I wish copyright laws weren't a thing. It has been a while since I played Wild and Title. Oh god, we'll take it. We'll take the Cooper. Yeah, we're just like bullying our opponent at this point, and that's a good draw too. And we do a delirium, so now that's like probably kind of shuts the door. Because you can't just chump his way out of this. I mean it doesn't necessarily shut the door, but it is going to make things look cool. And I love me some Grim Flare. I, I recently have reincorporated Grim Flare back into my shadow list, and I've been really happy with that. Flare is just a really quality card. Like, it's kind of like, it's a poor man's voice and a poor man's bob. I, I've, I've used to play, so the first deck I ever played modern. Triggers. What is Triggers? Traverse gets me a White Land, so I can play Indian Souls, so we'll do that after Conrad, I guess. Um, oh, no, I should have done it before combat because Traverse and Flare. Yeah, that sucks. I guess we'll just play Lingering Souls at this point. Yeah, I don't really want these. If this game gets the hell in a handbasket, I will want a Tireless Tracker. I just really like Grim Flare. It's like a, it's a weak, it's not, it doesn't beat like Voice, and it doesn't draw cards like Bob, but it does a little bit of both. We want to traverse. It's not close. Do you mean next turn? Oh, there's the red one. Do we want to traverse? It stops us. Next turn, I don't think I'm going to want to traverse, but I might like play tracker, like a naked tracker, and then traverse for a land next turn. Okay. This game's gonna get sweet here. Like alternatively, I can also traverse. For a what is this spirit? Oh, it's from the deck. Like alternatively, I can traverse for a basic this turn and then play tracker with the thing next turn. Hey, right, thank you. No problem, Six Sigma. Yeah, I think we're just gonna come in with these two, leave the flare back. So I don't want the flare, like I don't want this red one to just eat the flare. And then just play, you're just saying, then just play, like, sandbag this tracker until we draw land. Yeah, that's all I do. I don't know. I feel like we're still just bullying our opponent. Which is the nice part about playing Abzan. Like, Abzan, you're just going to, like, in pretty much every, like, Abzan is the mid-range deck that beats other mid-range decks. Like, Lingering Souls is, the like, the best card in the format. Okay, so this is dead. Works this. Yeah, Abzan is just like the biggest bully in the format. Which, I mean, like, whenever I play Death Shadow and I play against Abzan, it feels like my little, like, I'm the little brother and my big brother is putting me in like a noogie. 
My wife heard that one, and she's laughing at me now. Traverse, get ourselves a basic. God, I wish this just, I wish this came out, like, larger. <clears throat> then we'll just sandbag this tireless tracker. I guess they have a Lingering Souls in their graveyard that they can flash back to kind of fight this game a little bit. My opponent is going to build a pretty good board, but I still think because of this tireless tracker, we're in pretty good shape and we're just eventually going to win the Lingering Souls battle. And my opponent can't really get very aggressive with this Bedlam Reveler because if they do, then they're going to have to basically get rid of their entire board to deal with this Grim Flare. Three Swifty. Okay. See, that's pretty aggressive, so I'm just going to take that. And then they have to put... Ooh. So we just pulse these, and now we got... Oh, no, we can't pulse the spirit tokens, because that means our spirit tokens die. No, we. I think we use both of our two. So I guess I can go pulse the elementals, attack. My opponent goes block, block. Then they have to go block, block here because they have to put at least, because they're going to take one, they have to put at least three toughness in front of Grimflare. So we basically just kind of raft their board, and we're left with a Lingering Souls token and a Grimflare. And we set the top of our deck. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. Traverse for life. I like this Traverse deck a lot. I played this deck for probably about two or three months before I started playing Death Shadow. So my opponent has to chump away their whole board here. Both of these got to go in front. Or at least they have to put three power, in, they have to put three toughness in front of this tunnel. Or in front of this uh, flare. Okay, so this didn't work exactly like I thought it was going to. So we do get the pyro off the board. And my opponent's add a lingering souls tokens. So like, I guess my opponent goes, bolt, bolt, they still don't kill me. All right, they're looting. If we can just have sex here. I'm going to get some more coffee. There we go. So that did get a little dicey towards the end, but I still felt like we were pretty on top of things. Let me go here, check out check out this, this tweet I got. Three time going to on the last hope. Hmm. So I have some thoughts about this. I guess we can kind of like. So you cut down on some of like the meat and the potatoes of the deck. Like the traverses and the bobbles to play Ops, which like might be okay, you know, it kind of will smooth the deck out a little bit. I do think you need to fix, I guess I wouldn't play, um, if you're not splashing anything in the sideboard, I think I would play Misty Rainforest in this deck instead of the Marsh Flats, because you want to be able to fetch Breeding Pool with all, I guess assume all 12, yes, all 12 of your fetch lands. 
that cuts you out on the swamp, but that's the same thing that uh, the, the old decks used to do with uh, wooded foothills and swamp. Okay. Um, you don't have any Liliana the Veils or anything to kill really big things, so I'd be a little nervous about that. And you can't kill, you actually can't kill a Delph creature in your starting 60. And like, there's not a lot of Delph creatures, but that, that, you know, it's, that could be dangerous. But yeah, I, I could play something like this. I have been trying to find a way to incorporate Snapcaster Mage back into this deck and cutting white. See if that works. So we can't keep this hand. I would keep this hand if I had a Traverse. But I think we're going to ship it. Right, um, I don't think we need another answer. I think we need some threats. Like, like Lingering Souls isn't a really good threat on its own. Lingering Souls is more there for card economy. Delta. Alright, there's a threat. So I'm pretty sure this gets Overgrown Tomb. And I don't want to draw any more of So let's go get Overgrown Tomb. And let's check out what he's, what he's got going on over there. Okay, okay. So this is so this is either Death Shadow or Jun with weird fetch lanes. Because De Death Shadow wouldn't play Bolt. We're going to take Tom Lord. But, like, Death Shadow doesn't play Lightning Bolt. If my opponent shocks here, maybe they're playing some, like, kind of new kind of Death Shadow thing. No. Maybe they're playing, like, some kind of monstrosity mid range deck. Or they could just be playing Jun, and that's, like, the fetch lanes they have. I'd like to draw. Not that. So I'm probably going to end up pathing one of these Tomagoyfs and then edicting a Tomagoyf and then trading my Liliana two for one. So we do have to, we are going to take a little bit of damage here. And I'm going to path this on my, before it does damage to me. Because I don't want to get, there's no sense in me taking three extra damage. And then I'll take the two for one with the Liliana and then break the game open with Lingering Souls. One of these voices going in. So they drew a forest. They shouldn't have done that. Unless they're playing their own Liliana. Tom Lord, okay. So yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of poor sequencing for my opponent, I think. Maybe I should play the Meyer. So we'll take our two for and then we'll be untapping. We'll have three cards, they're two cards, and we have like the best card in the matchup. And we this is this is nice because this is a you know this has got ghosts has got raging ravine written all over it, which I do occasionally lose games to uh, uh, to Jun when I played Abzan and it was mostly because of raging ravine like we just exhausted each other and the ravine just hit so hard. What do we got here? So my opponent plays their own Liliana. I think I'm just going to discard the Temple Garden. Back a Goyf. Play a Goyf. It's a big time Goyf. Okay. So I can start oozing away at his mana base, or I can just start getting Lingling Souls going. This ooze is like a plant. Oh, um, Pol Pol Capri, Pol Capri. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, but thank you very much for the support. I kind of want to play Ooze and get Ooze working, but that's worse to Liliana. My opponent's, I don't know, quarter of the way through their deck and hasn't played one yet. So I think I should have held that land for in case there's another Color Runs coming in. I do think I'm going to take five. I'm going to take this first one. Use my life total as a bit of a resource. The worst draw that I could have for my opponent is if they have a Liliana the Last Hope or a um, 
or like a Bob. Bob would be really bad. Line of play of souls instead of Lily. Take the Goyf and hit their GQ, their red source, and then Lily minus. So, there was, I guess you could have done that, but I automatically get a two for one with the Liliana and the Lightning Bolt. And they have a Bloodstained Mire, so in their hand we knew that, so I can just fetch for another red source. I assume they have a Stomping Ground. All right, that's pretty good. So now we just play Grim Flare and Flashback on the So let's get in here for two. I could play Ooze in Grim Flare and then save my Lingering Soul so I don't get absolutely blown out by a Maelstrom Pulse. I guess I'm just going to attack with one. And then play, play Ooze Flare. Flare is certainly worse in these green-black interactive matchups than Bob. Because, like, if my opponent just hangs back with their Tarmogoy, if I'm not hitting with my Grim Flare, which is kind of rough. But yeah, Astra, Akrish the Hound. I think it's just I think it's just playing too passively, in my opinion. Like doing it like that is you're just like just take my two for one. I've got lingering souls. I'm gonna take two for one wherever I can get them. Oh yeah, that's good. So now we're just gonna make an ooze huge. I think he should have pushed the scavenging ooze and then held his time life back and just blocked my scav. Just checked my grim flare with the voice and then just get beat in the air. So we're just going to preserve our life total. Play a little passively. Okay. Right, so we're going to attack. And I am going to buff my scavenging ooze. Just tap out. Eat this. And now we're in a position where I don't think I'm going to chump block next turn. Which is playing a little inc inconsistently, so maybe I should have thought about what I was doing more last turn and saved myself a lingering souls. Okay. Because now my opponent has eight. Nine. That's two lives. Two lives are slow. Uh, the John, thank you very much. Oh no, we're not going to cast that. So you want to follow? Traversing the Hooven Wall, as we, we used to call it back in the day. Yeah, we're just going to take this. Alright, so now we're going to leave back. We'll leave back two Lingering Souls tokens. We don't have any way to get, get this any larger. Now I do want to keep Delirium. So, and I can't, I can't shrink the time of life without losing Delirium. So I'm just going to leave it be and get rid of some stuff out of my opponent's graveyard. Okay, so this means that they probably drew a way to remove the snack pass from me, or the scavengers, or they have another blocker. Yeah, that sucks. Alright, so let's empty out. My opponent could play a Tassiger. Like, that is kind of olden days of Black Moon life, but it is still something they could do. So I, I don't want to eat my Liliana because I want to keep Delirium. I think I'm just going to get rid of this Fatal Push. Definitely a good draw. I guess I could have eaten my Liliana because this guy didn't lose. Alright. So we can attack and then hope we don't get bolted. Then my opponent's got to find a way to remove both of these Lingering Souls tokens and we get a draw step. So I think that's what we're going to do here. We're now in a little bit of trouble, and I wanna I wanna take the uh, take the urgency here. And we we definitely died a lightning bolt here, like, but we also cut off their draw step as well. 
we're not going to fetch because I lose with Debbie Colagon's command. Okay. So now we're going to attack. They've got to use a removal spell to stay alive. Which they don't, doesn't seem like they have. We're pausing, so either Moto's dying or they're conceding. One of those is normal, and one of those is awesome. And in this stream, it's not our opponent conceding. Okay, so in this matchup, we just want to kind of lean out, or get a little fatter, and play the, play the uh, mid-range game. So I don't like these. I kind of, I obviously want Lingering Souls. Um, I want Liliana the Last Hope. I want Pulse. Pulses. Shriek Ma, Tireless Tracker, Tireless Tracker. So I think I'm going to cut the Shriek Ma. That seems a little too medium and it doesn't kill Bob. Go something like this. There's a lot of three drops. We're definitely going to have to play to our three drops. Like, we might have to traverse for land when we don't really want to. Yeah? Hang on one second. chat doing for New Year's. You guys got any sweet plans? What are you up to? My wife and I are, are her sister's coming over and we're gonna watch movies and eat glorious Chinese food, which I am excited about. Yeah, this is good. We can manipulate our top card a little bit. I'm kind of worried about, like, Knight of Souls Betrayal. Opponent kept in a discard spell? That's alright. I think that that, I think it's, like, very frowned upon by, like, the community to leave in discard spells in these matchups. And I think that sometimes it's okay. Especially against Abzan, because it goes dead less quickly. Thoughts he's dead. All right, we're going to keep that. We'll draw that. Like the discard spells are just more relevant later into the game because of, uh, because, like, you have Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls clogs up your hands so you don't deploy the rest of your spells. All right, I'm going to a lot of discard here. Took my coins. So... I'm not going to play my Grim Flare next turn because I don't want... A, I want to hold up Abrupt Decay in case our opponent gets cute with Blood Moon. But I guess if they had Blood Moon, they would have taken this Decay. And I really just don't want to play into my opponent's Liliana. That's just one of the mopiest feelings ever is when you on the draw in these black-green matchups get, get Veiled. And if you get Veiled, it's just like one of the best ways to lose the game. I wonder if they kept their veils in, because their veils are much worse than my veils are. I would like to draw Lingering Souls. I don't want, I don't, I don't want to draw Lingering Souls or like a bad card. Because I don't want to just play this Liliana and discard one of my heaters. Yeah, there we go. So I could play the planes, but I think I'm actually just going to fetch shock and play the Overgrown Tomb. We get an Overgrown Tomb. 
and uh, discard this planes. It would been really interesting. I would have had a very interesting turn if I would have not drawn this planes. Because if I hadn't drawn this planes, it would have been. I might have just played Liliana and done nothing. I don't know if I want to plus it in trading one of my like three heater cards for a random card of my opponent's hand, like you know, land. I definitely think that's really mopey to do. Just play Liliana when you don't have anything good to discard and then discard something. You're getting bolted? Okay. And again, we're gonna get a two for here unless our opponent the second way they kill Liliana is with a um, with a Kolagon's command and make us discard something. And I'll probably discard push. If we're all above the board here. Yeah, which is what's going on. And then we'll play 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 Grim Flare. And then hope my opponent's last card is not Liliana the Veil. So I think I'm actually going to. I am gonna play this land, because if my opponent does play Veil and they edict me, I'm gonna to wanna to abrupt decay the uh, the Veil and then untap with four free mana and not have anything tied up so I can play like Lingering Souls. Bitter Blossom. This card's pretty sweet in grindy matchups. Not very good against Grim Flare. I don't even know if I really want to abrupt decay it. I don't think I'm gonna abrupt decay it. I think because of Grim Flare, we're just like, we're in a good spot here where I can save this for like a Tarmogoyf or a Bob. We're gonna play that out. Shouldn't have done that. Should have left that in my hand. We'll make sure to fetch. If my opponent kills this, I'll about to pay this. Because I don't, I don't want to like, like I'll, I'll deal with this Bitter Blossom doing Bitter Blossom things while I have Grim Flare. I literally want all three of these cards. So which one do I want first? Probably Maelstrom Pulse. So I'm gonna go, I'm actually gonna start with Liliana. So we're gonna put the tracker on the bottom. So put these cards in graveyard. We don't wanna put any in graveyard. We're gonna go tracker, pulse, veil. And now I'm going to abrupt decay this because I can get this, and then if my opponent plays a creature, I can get that next turn with the Liliana. Okay, so now we're gonna have a little veil off, which is gonna get a little awkward, but I have, my veil's gonna be ahead. And then hopefully our opponent gives me something like hopefully our opponent rips a creature. Yeah, this veil off is gonna be a bit awkward. Bolt. Okay, so bolt my Liliana probably. And now I don't feel as bad pulsing Lilianas because I have a tireless tracker coming. That's bad. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get rid of this because I'm gonna lose it anyways, and we're losing the veil race. So my opponent's gonna crack me for four. I'm gonna go to nine. I'm gonna go spanks. I mean, it does feel kind of mopey, but ooh, gross. That was gross. So now we need, now we need like lingering souls. Lingering souls and we're in it. My opponent is questionable about our play in the pulsing the Lilianas. But I think it was right to pulse the Lilianas because we're behind on the Edict race. Our opponent has a Raging Ravine in play and we know we're drawing a Tireless Tracker. So I still think it was right to pulse the Liliana. It was just like, even though I lose mine because we're ahead on the race, but it is, a, and he's just gonna kill mine with a Raging Ravine. So yeah, my opponent's just being, doesn't know. They just don't know. We need to see a Lingering Souls here pretty soon, though. I'm just going to crack us with a Raging Ravine. If we draw Lingering Souls, we're, we're back to parity. So 
we'll bobble on our opponent's turn so that we don't discard the card to the veil. The journey position. It's an easy discard for them. So now we get two cracks at a way to kill this Raging Ravine. As the Ravine will get us next turn. Nope, they got it. They got it. So what's that right to do? Maybe I should have been like digging more aggressively to Lingering Souls with my Grim Flare. Because like... How they lose the game is they like Liliana lock me, sort of. I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe I, maybe I, maybe I toss that game. I think we're gonna submit. I don't think we want to change anything. We could have, we could have definitely, we could have definitely blown it there. But I am not sure. It is going to be sad if we lose to John. Um, sounds okay. It's not great, but, you know, the worst thing you can do is mulligan in these matchups. And we are just going to be able to go, like, pass Flare Veil, which is nice. So we'll play our Marsh Flats first. I don't think we're going to be have to pass on one. I'm not passing on one. It's, like, against my religion. Okay, that's good. So us Godless Shrine. We have enough. I guess I want to get Temple Garden because I just want to be able to go absolutely nuts with the Scavenging Ooze. Like, Scavenging Ooze in the late game can just clean everything up. So let's go with Grim Flare. And then I'm going to play Bobble out and crack it on my opponent's upkeep. Because they've already shown that they have discard in their deck. Okay, so Donna Blood Stay Meyer. That is a little tip there that you never should Bobble on your main phase and discard mirrors. All right, we're gonna get a hit in with the old Grim Flare. All right, and then we're gonna be able to... Yeah, and this is why this is the best card in my deck. Again, second best card in my deck. Lingering Souls is the best. Though K-Command's really good for my opponent's list. So, I don't think we want this Veil, and I don't think we necessarily want Grim Flare because we can just rebuy it. But we do want this last hope. And our Grim Flare is a 4 4, which is a big dude. It's a very big dude. Fatal Push. So now our Grim Flare is dead. Alas. Such is life. Blossom. That's okay, because the Liliana of the Last Hope is going to check that pretty well. So, I think I just discard my land, play Liliana, and then rebuy re Grimplay. I just get the automatic two for one. Just card resource him out here. Alternatively, I could get on the board with this Joyce. It's a little worse than my opponent's Liliana. But I guess I'm getting on the board. My opponent's got a Veil. It's, they're playing a Mountain. This is interesting. So I can get on the board and hold up Path to deal with a creature. Or I can just play Last Hope, minus, and get back Grim Flare, which I think I'm going to minus and get back Grim Flare. Because Grim Flare is going to like help me a lot against this Bitter Blossom. No, there's our scavenging news, which was gone. And we're just gonna like, we're just gonna card equality them out. Or card quantity. So maybe I should have discarded souls and kept the land so I can go like flare, flare into, um, 
another bear blossom. All right. Um, discard, then discard Lingering Souls, and then just go double two drop. Maybe it's terminate. Play our guy out. Pretty weak to damnation. And then even if he kills us, we can rebuy. We can rebuy our own Grim Flare next turn, which is gonna feel kind of mopey, but especially we have to like lose our Liliana. These pulses are sweet. I mean, these bitter blossoms are, are, are not bad. Okay. So they we eat it. That's a pretty good draw. So now I think I think I'm just gonna edict. No, I can just discard my path. Because like I can go discard path, plus on here, play souls, play Parmagoyf. Cause he's gonna get rid of it anyways. And this is gonna protect my Liliana the best. Here, here. Here, here. And then next turn, I'm probably just definitely going to be a Grim player. What do we got from the opponent here? Their own Grim player. Okay. I think I know who this is. That was unfortunate. So, plus here. So I actually can just go attack plus an edict. So let's start off by attacking both of these early on. Oh, I should have attacked my Tarmaloids. I wasn't even thinking about that. So let's figure out how to best fix our mistake. I think I just rebuy my Grim Flare. So I Edict, rebuy my Grim Flare. Yeah, that was so stupid. That was so dumb. That was so dumb. Hey, Coffee, how you doing? All right, let's make him eat it. So he either gets rid of his Grim Flare. Where's the cube deck? That's later, as soon as my wife gets going. Okay, so now they're just gonna get rid of their... So now I'm basically gonna yeah, I might, I might have screwed the pooch here. But that's okay. We do get a hit in with Grim Flare. If they go to trade this, I'll just eat it. If my opponent has another... Like, if my opponent rips a removal spell, then we're in trouble. But they are under a lot of pressure from this... Um, from their own Bitter Blossoms. Like, their own Bitter Blossoms is a four-turn clock. Not going to. They're going to lose to their... They're going to lose to their, uh, to their bitter blossoms. So let's get Godless Shrine. Yeah, and we just made like a super mistake, like talking through the lines there. Oh, that sucks. So let's start by attacking, and then we'll figure out what we want to do with our Liliana. They probably have to soak up damage. Yeah, 
Giannis doesn't do anything. So, I think we're just going to bin all these. I'm going to draw the text on next turn, and our whole plan is going to be just tireless tracker. And we'll play this out, and I'll leave out the ghost quarter just in case our opponent kills the tractor and we can get some immediate value. Uh, 72 viewers. I appreciate everybody for showing up this morning, hanging out. I hope you're all having a good day. What's the day draw here? Grim Player's a good draw. Gives them delirium. Again, they can't really attack. You want it me. I'm both trying to cotton. Now, do we just go get a basic? Yeah. I gotta figure out what to do with this Liliana. Cause I don't think, like, I don't think I'm gonna plus it. I think I'm just gonna get rid of one of these fairy things, but let's start off by going like this. Let's crack a clue. Traverse. Traverse goes and gets me. Does it go get me Shriek Ma or did I leave Shriek Ma out? Shriek Ma's neck. Give me one second. Uh, we're tied, Toppy. Game three. So I can just traverse for another Grim Flare, which is, I think is what I want to do. I think traversing for Flare is where we want to be. And then I'd probably just eat it a token. Which kind of feels bad, but this isn't doing anything. I could get Tasker and then still pop a clue. What can I get back to Tasker? Maybe like Grim Flare. We're just going to get another Grim Flare. And then... I think I attack with both of these. Because my opponent has to put four power in front of this. Which means they have to block here or they die to these. So I'm just going to attack with everything. Because like they trade here, chump here. And then I Edict. Great jump. Yep. And now they have to present five blockers next turn. Or they die to their fetch land. Or they die. Because like they need they can't let a damage come through with this with this uh with this flare. Yes, Pulse Pulse would be okay for them. They'd have to Pulse their own things, though, so they still have the same problem. They basically have one draw step to, to produce a blocker and kill their Bitter Blossoms. Well, uh, Moto is... Moto is tweaking this morning. Give my opponent the old GG's after they uh, salted me earlier. All right, I'm gonna go put my Christmas sweater on. 
my, my wife and I when we when we do our cube draft. We're gonna we're gonna wear our Christmas our ugly Christmas sweaters. We did it. 4 1. 4 1 drunk with moon. What does that mean? You're drunk at like 9 30 in the morning coffee? These are the sweet. We did a Chris, ugly Christmas sweater swap. And this is what we uh We did ugly Christmas sweater swap, and this is the one that I got. Oh, yeah, you're going to have to. Why is the stream decker still stuck on no band shadow? It should be it. Yeah. The stream decker has abs and traverse, right? Oh, no band shadow. Did I not upload it? All right, hang on. Let me upload this so that we're, we have this going right. Abs and traverse. Confirm. We should be good now. Uh, we'll ship this hand for no land heater. The, the Kiki deck? I mean, I'm gonna keep this. It's not great, but I don't really wanna go down to five. I'll put that on top, because it's a spell I can cast. Bloodstain Fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a good deck. Like, it's not, I don't think by any means it's a great deck, but I do think, I do think it's good. He's, he's got like, he can play his dirtily control game that he likes to do, and then he can just kill people. I think we should have fired last night. Dude, should, should have done it up. We're playing against Grixis Shadow. Yeah, I think we're playing against Grixis Shadow. Bloodstained Mire into Steam Vent says that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's Johnny's kind of deck, and which, which is like the good part about it. The good part is that it's a deck that Johnny can play and is his his uh his cup of tea. Play out this Dharma toy. Acid Moss. That is scary. Acid Moss is the one that for four mana stone rains you and ramps the other person, right? Yeah, we're definitely playing this Bricks of Shadow. Acid Moss is the stuff of nightmares. You play blue white. You, you, Field of Ruin is basically Acid Moss. Oh, so we're like a, we're like a, a weird Grixis deck. Cast. Let's hit this. This will grow goyf. Field of Ruins, Castle Lane as well. Field of Ruin, Asimov, same thing. It's the same thing. The cool thing about Field of Ruin, when I played, I played a league with Blue White a little while ago, was that it actually ramped. It was cool how it ramped you. Like, you go Field of Ruin into Cantrip, or Field of Ruin into Path to Exile. Just bolt in my face. I'm gonna bolt this Tongue Lloyd. They should have bolted my face. This doesn't do anything. Because the Goyf grows. It doesn't like, they should have just gone upstairs. No, I should turn off the auto yield. Yeah, it's it's Johnny's kind of dead. If we get mooned here, no, we're not gonna get mooned. Are we gonna terminate this guy though? Even Pyro. So I'm gonna get a tapped. Get a tapped. Probably, probably again an overgrown tomb. 
We're primarily a pretty green-black deck. And then I'll just decay this. What's up? Megan's, Megan's gearing up for her cube draft. She's getting her food into her. She's getting all excited. So what is, what do you got, man? You gonna bolt my Tarmogoyf again? It did not work last time. Yeah, I think that Johnny does well with that twin deck because like Johnny likes that kind of deck and he plays that kind of deck well. He's always been like a good Splinter Twin player. There's definitely a chance we could pack one, pick one, pass a Lotus. Though I talked with Megan and we're, we're on kind of the plan that if it looks like, like we talked about signets and moxes being like stones, and if it looks like a stone, I think she's gonna take it. That's the plan. We did a little, we did a little practice session last night. But none of them have stones in the name. They're, they're, they're like, they're artifacts, they're colorless. Mox. Mox Sapphire. Oh, they're like, oh, they're diamonds. Okay. All right, you're right. We definitely could be taking a Lodestone Golem, number one. We getting K-commanded? We get K-commanded, I'm discarding this one getting souls. Because these, these Traverses will eventually be put on mine. Is a Blood Moon? This guy Blood Moon's me. He has got some serious stuff. Okay. Pick cards that could that could theoretically be wedding rings. Okay. What's that? <laughs> Alright, so that's a good draw. But I really want to so I can actually play Liliana. Dick up, ditch my lingering souls, head delirium and traverse. I think that's that's the game plan here. Then we're probably gonna traverse for a grim flare to make um, to make this young pyromancer a lot worse. He ditched his pyromancer. Okay, maybe he's, maybe he's pyro flooded. Get grim flare. The next time we can go Lingering Souls and Flare, which is sweet. All right, we're going to go for this now. Because if they bolt it, we'll just play another one and we'll eat it again. Are they just going to flash in a Snapcaster Mage? Oh no, it's an Is It Charm. I think I'm just gonna flash back souls and play Grimflare now. So I can just eat it next turn. And all he did was just like looting. So let's get this into play. Green, black. Ninety-four viewers, thank you all for showing up and hanging out this morning. I hope you're having a good time. My name is Dylan Hovey, and I am a, I'm a sponsored streamer through the Card Hoarder Network. What is this? Is it a Tasker? This is definitely a Delve card. And uh, most of the time we stream Modern here, but occasionally we stream some other stuff. We're going to do a Holiday Cube here in a little bit on this New Year's. And, uh, yeah, you can find all the recordings from my stream. Down, this is just going to work out like absolute gold. We're just going to eat both of these creatures. What's that? Oh, you can find all my archives in my YouTube channel, which is linked below. <laughs> Six pin. That's where I keep everything archived. So I think I'm going to leave this path to exile up. Like I could just path this in plus, but I'd rather just kind of like card economy, card economy my opponent. What is this? I don't want to. What is going on, Moto? Cancel. 
Oh, I accidentally clicked traverse. That would have been bad. I guess it wouldn't have been that bad. I would have just traversed for a land. I'm going to give him back... Probably, like, Lightning Bolt. Because, like, I might as well keep them off cards. Yeah, I'm just going to give them back a Lightning Bolt. If they want me to... Um, I guess Mana Leak. Mana Leak while you're behind is pretty bad. Yeah, they just they scoop them up. So we're playing against probably like a Grixis control deck. So we want these. We want our discard. They have. I don't really like Fatal Push, so I'm gonna cut it. Even though they have, and I'm gonna cut my decays as well. But I am gonna bring in Collective Brutalities, the Lingering Souls, this, the two trackers. I have to cut a couple more cards. I'm going to cut an Inquisition. Probably cut some Inquisitions, because these Collector Brutalities hit like the Cryptic Commands, and these hit Delve Cards and Cryptic Commands, which really matter. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. That felt more like Rix's Delve. Maybe. Yep. I feel like I would have seen a Delver, though. He he moved through like half of his uh, half of his library. Right? I mean, his graveyard was huge. This hand is not great. It is very threat dense, and we are halfway to delirium. Probably two thirds away because one of these is going to die. But our opponent mulligan, I would really like to find a discard spell on one, I think. Yeah, we'll keep this one. Play our good old lay of the land on one. Yeah, we're going to just bottom that. We're just looking for lands. Ooh, they got a discard spell? Oh, they have a spell bomb. Okay. Alright, so now we're definitely gonna just traverse for a basic. It's gonna be a swamp. Because we're not, we're not gonna actually get delirium with the spell bomb here. with a Twitch notification, or the Streamlabs. Free bowl pack, thank you very much for the uh, free bowl pack. Thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate the support. All right, play the Swamp. I could Brutality, but I think we're just going to present some threats here because he can't even spell bomb my graveyard and kill it with a Lightning Bolt, and a Fatal Push kills it anyways. And then we, if he does, we can last hope it back, which I'm all about. Probably going to hold this spell bomb. This has been like the fairest league I've played in a while. It's going to kind of suck if this is a Liliana for the last hope. Okay. That's kind of gross. I guess I want to play my own and play the tracker next turn. When I can get a clue. I really don't want to run Lingering Souls face first into this Liliana. Unless I can like play it and flash it back to get a lot of pressure on. Five. Tick up. Opponent gonna play a delve card. What do we got? What do we got? Is this a veil? Or we have like a snap serum visions. Ah, oh, grows Tarmogoyf. So now our Tarmogoyf can get in there. My opponent just like this uber grindy. Um. Grixis deck, like, not control, just kind of like a mid-range beast. All right, nasty Gurmash. 
Well, we would draw a path to exile, but my opponent is conveniently holding up one there. They could actually kill my Goyf here. No, they wouldn't, because this goes to the graveyard. That's not bad. So let's go here. What do we got there? Sam, Sam, Sam's delicious. Thank you very much for the follow. And then we'll just get, I think I'm just going to get another green black source. Tick up on this angler. But next turn we play in flashback lingering souls to start fighting this Liliana. And we can, I guess we can also attack with tireless tracker if we want to. Jim Miles, thank you very much. You're the number one magic, I'm the number one magic streamer online. That's pretty awesome. So I guess I'm gonna ditch this brutality. But again, this makes Goyf big. I push that. Okay, so now we just play in Flashback Lingering Souls. Alternatively, I can minus, get back Tarmogoyf, and play Lingering Souls. But he's just going to like pop his Spell Bomb. So yeah, I need, I need to get on the board. Yeah, I think we're just going to like... This game's going to go on for a while. Yeah, man, that's pretty awesome. We're up to 105 viewers. Like, we do have a lot of people hanging out here this morning. Popular stream hype. All right, we'll plus on this angler. So we are going to be able to get after this Liliana a little bit. I think that I'm going to chump this angler, though, for one turn so that I can just get back my tracker and then try to, like, pressure... Because if we find a way to answer this, we're, we're pretty much golden. This is the only thing keeping our opponent in the game. Oh, my music. Log in with Twitch. My music left. Authorize. Come on, Nightbot, you can do it. Here we go, night bot. Here we go. Yeah, they probably will, but I could also like force it, right? Oh, I should have done that in the upkeep. I was looking, I was worried about night bot. Come on, night bot. I guess I can, maybe I should have bothered myself to determine if I want to block or not, but I'm pretty sure I won't block. They're drawing a spell bomb. Yeah, I am gonna chump. No. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely gonna need to find. Cause I have a lot of outs for this. I have pulses. I have decays. I can just draw a creature and be in good shape. And we're drawing a lot of clues. Okay, that's also good. I'm gonna play my land out because I want to have as much mana as possible. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have a sand casting range. No, we're good, Coffee. Yeah, we are, we're in good shape. Hit this for two. We're gonna crack two clues. And then we're also, we're also heading up with our Liliana. So like, we have double Liliana in play and we're gonna win this game. My opponent's drawing kind of a dud as well. That's a pretty sad down at the Archmage. Our opponent is Kologon's commanding, it seems. It's really a steep delve. I'm gonna get rid of my veil on my last turn. Veil doesn't really do anything next turn. Like he can go uptick, uptick, kill my veil. 
So maybe he wants to hit last hope to keep him like squarely ahead in the last hope duel. You've been had, yes. For sure. I still think we're going to win this game. Opponent pops spell bomb. They draw spell bomb because we knew they had that. So their hand is spell bomb. Um, spell bomb and whatever it is. Um, Dermag Angler, and then they get a draw step. The game is going to get harder if they find a snap best in each. So there's the bomb. We knew about that. I'm going to fetch before I crack my day. Yeah, it, ta it takes a while. It is, it is an old rule. An old rule that has changed. For the better, I like it. Adds cool gameplay. They left one K command. So they have one unknown. Let's crack this. It does suck that our traverses are on offline, but at least we've drawn two of our traverses. We're going to wait, because our opponent could have drawn like a Thought Seize. They showed us discard spell in the beginning of the game. I think. No, it was a bomb. It wasn't a discard spell. Um, again, I'm just going to get another green source. I don't think it's ever an issue. Like, I never figure the same plays like that anyways. This is a wizard being too easy. Yeah. I agree. All right. Give me. Let's, let's let's get a clue here. Okay, that's good. Draw. Tap our two worst lands. Okay. And now we're going to be, I guess, not ahead, but. And I have. One more fetchable land, so I have two more fetchables. So I would love to draw a lingering soul. Long grindy game. Opponent didn't crack the bomb either. God, are we gonna have like Lily dueling Liliana ultimates? I have a lot of outs. I guess I don't because I boarded out my. There's the Delver. Because I boarded out my. Uh, my Rupture Case. Good Elder. Okay. So we, you were right, whoever called this Grixis Delver. I guess I've got probably two pulses. No, even my pulses are out. Oh, wow. So we're going to have to reboard differently in the next match. Yeah, we didn't see any Delvers in the last game. I wonder if you're supposed to board out Delvers in this matchup. Like, because of, um, because, like, of the presence of Lingering Souls. Because Lingering Souls just owns this card. I mean, this card just owns Lingering Souls, so, you know, have it what you will. Maybe they boarded Delvers. If they boarded Delvers, this would be the matchup. What's going on, guys? Like, what are we doing here? Alvine and PD. I feel like I recognize this name. What are they doing? It's been a good game, at least. Usually people bring out pushes. Yeah, but like Lingering Soul just straight up embarrasses that card. And I would be willing to bet, like Liliana Last Hope is kind of, you know, your counteractive, but I would be willing to bet I have more Lingering Soul. I have more like cards that blank those Delvers than they have cards that mess with my Lingering Soul, which is kind of like the tension of the matchup. Yeah, I don't think Delvers get better post war against Lingering Souls. But he's probably got like his static caster electrolyzed, so maybe he's got like some game. Our right, opponent is tanking. Come on. 
Make a play. Get my wife and I can do that. I wonder what our opponent's thinking about. They're probably thinking about like what they're gonna get for lunch or something like that. Because they're not doing anything. I'm gonna get some coffee while our opponent takes forever. Good stream. Oh, we had 10 so far. We had three hosts. Nice. Been live for an hour and a half. Well, this is frustrating. They've lost connection. Okay. So I guess while my opponent loses connection, we can look up some of the sweet decks we played yesterday. We played No Band Modern List yesterday with some friends. And these are the two decks that I played. So this is a deck, I really like this deck. I think that this deck would be good. I think I need to like figure out how to build it correctly. Uh, Orca Flora, Orca Flatador. Excuse me if I butchered that, but thank you very much. This is the deck that I played yesterday and I was, I was pretty pumped about it. Like it was fun. Bring these up here. There's certainly some changes that I would make. I don't know if Jace in the main board is any good or not. Um, I won't then. But like this was a lot of fun. Um, I think that if I was gonna, act, if this deck was actually real, I think I'd play like two less Tarmogoyfs and then maybe J board the Jaces and play some number of Liliana the Veils in the main deck, or some more removal or like the full eight discards, but. This was sweet. I I had many turn one death shadows with like probe and mental misstep. Um, so I was really excited about this deck. This was a lot of fun. Um, then I also played No Band Jun, which I don't know if I built it right or not, but it just it did not feel super impressive yesterday. It just felt like pretty mopey. I got just hammered on by a twin deck. That was sweet. The twin deck was playing Chrome Mox, so he was on the play and he doubled Chrome Mox and he tapped my only land. It is kind of, if I get to misstep something, it's super easy. But like this deck did not feel as, it just felt too clunky and slow. It didn't feel super great. Not nearly as powerful as the Death Shadow deck. My friend's Splinter Twin deck seemed sweet because it had, it had Dig and Jace and had Ponder. He forgot to put in, uh, he forgot to put in Misstep, which is the only card that he should have had, but. Oh, camera not precisely over. Oh, we're back. Uh, a little cheeky, how's it going? Yeah, Jund isn't, yeah, that was the problem. Now we need to find a Lingering Souls, a Tarmogoyf, a Grim Flare would be great. Grim Flare wouldn't be great actually, because he would just murk it. Basically we need Lingering Souls. Well, he's an idiot. Like the mental misstep is a free it's a free counter spell and everything like that was sweet in the format cost one. But like misstep's just so good. Like like misstep, like in the games that I beat you, misstep won me the games. 
So I think I have a basic forest, so we're gonna get Godless Shrine. We need Lingering Souls. Give me a Lingering Souls. We're drawing a lot of lands in our, in our 20 land deck. Alright, that's not bad. So let's go with this. I mean, that means the Liliana's gonna ultimate, which is pretty bad. And I don't think that I'm ever gonna beat a Liliana ultimate. Unless I have my own Liliana ultimate, this could get pretty weird. You probably cut Jace. I mean, Jace is a lot of mana, man. We're gonna have dueling Liliana ultimates. The Jace out of the Death Shadow deck felt pretty sweet. But I think I'm going to keep it because I could get to a point where, like, I ultimate this Liliana, and then the Liliana ultimate wins me the game. Well, he won He won the shadow matchup because I made a mistake. But he to I tossed game three. Should I plus... Should I play this Liliana? I probably should to get closer to the ultimate faster, because like these zombies are gonna mess, like we, we're gonna be behind in the zombie race here. Looked on his side, he just had all the reaction. Nobody tried Blood Moon Dark Depths, nope. And then, actually, if I edict my opponent, they have to get rid of... If they get rid of a zombie, then I start winning the zombie race. Yeah, I mean, his deck was good, but, like, it was not... Like, he, he won the shadow matchup because I messed up. I messed up twice. Like, I, I just forgot to push a click in response which would have kept my life total much higher and I could have played a little freer. So they went top, top, so they're drawing a card they want. So I'm definitely gonna trade two zombies. Trade my zombies for their zombies. Please attack. Yeah, this is good because it's going to get me ahead in the zombie race. Well, not quite because, well, if I find one more removal spell, it'll get me ahead in the zombie race, which will be good. We we could, but like I, I have a lot going on. So we'll Edict this, play Goyf. Then Goyf is just like a random body. And then I can start attacking him with Tarmogoyf, and he has to block it with like a zombie. And then my zombies are gonna start getting, um, I'm gonna start making more zombies because the Goyf is going to like, he's gonna have to block the Goyf. And if he blocks the Goyf, yeah, this is a weird game, but if he blocks the Tarmogoyf, then he starts losing on, uh, on dudes. Yeah, so I'm just going to attack with this Tarmogoyf. If he decides to trade three zombies for it, then that's good for the home team. Yeah, if he is cryptic, we're in a lot of trouble. The Snapcaster Mage is also bad. What is he getting back, though? He's commanding. Tarmogoyf is more than just a body. Oh, so now we're we're entering the stage of the game where this gets where the snapcaster gets disgusting, like our opponent found. It's just like a co a non copyright list. See, now my opponent sees it. They're gonna get rid of a zombie, 
and then they're gonna start to get ahead on the zombie race. Yeah. But I'm still gonna send in with both of my Grim Flares. Or both my Grim Flare and my Goyf next turn. They returned a Snapcaster Mage. So Snap doesn't really do anything besides just block Grim Flare. What sucks is that my opponent's probably gonna time out. It's been an interesting game at least. It would be I wish that we could finish all of this, but we won't. Yeah, they definitely should have terminated a zombie, I think. So they, they get four zombies, or they get six zombies. Why is this deck, why is this deck over a tested deck like Dundas Shadow? No reason I wanted to play this deck today. The punk's got Snapcaster Mage. And now we're just like, we're pretty dead. My opponent can snap. Like I, I prefer Jenda Shadow a lot more. Am I gonna be able to swing the zombie race? Alright, I guess we'll go here and then here. This deck came out like, I don't know, about a year ago. And I liked it a lot. So I terminate a zombie. I liked it a lot. I think it's. I think it's like. I think it's the most powerful version of the Abzan deck because it's it's lower to the ground. Well, your payoffs. It's different than that. Like Grim Flare is very good. Um, I should have cast Dotsie's last turn just to. Um, just to. Uh, all right. Just to get Delirium. Escalate Blue Rose. Bing, bing, bing. Just got all these. Uh, Jump Flare is very good. And Big Tarmogoyce are good. And like, what gets, what's nice about this deck, okay, so he pushes the zombie. So I can't see that line. Yeah, it's still good though. Like, trade, like it's, it's a good card. I play it in my Death Shadow deck at the moment. What's nice? afford to attack. I don't even know. So I'm going to get nine more zombies, which means nine. So my opponent's got 21 zombies. I'll have 16 zombies. So I'm taking 10 on their attack. Yeah, I can attack. What was I playing? That he was playing. Ditch this, ditch this. Like, I do prefer playing Death Shadow over this deck. I just wanted, I just played this deck for, I don't know, a couple months and I wanted to give it another world. Oh, I found a, oh yeah. Where's my punk get here? So I can trade off zombies, which still ends up pretty poor for me. So I should try to trade off the least amount of zombies as possible. But then if my opponent gets really aggressive with an attack, we just kill them. That tasker is actually not too bad because we can attack through it. Because of uh, the Grim Flayer. This is getting weird. We're definitely just gonna attack and then hope our opponent just blocks with two zombies because then it slows down their zombie production. Yeah, this is the we're, we're this is just the Walking Dead. I'm probably gonna give my opponent back like a Delver. So 
So we get 18 zombies, 10, 12, 30, 40, 44. We get 18 zombies, which gives us 10, 34. Yeah, so we're just like, we're just dead. But unless we find, unless we mill into lingering souls, if we mill into lingering souls, we might have a chance. But like this math is not good for the home team. That's good they blocked with one of those. Block with another one, okay. I, don't, I didn't take enough time to really figure out this math here, but I think I'm pretty dead. What's gonna win us the game is obviously the clock. Like our opponent is going to time out. We don't know the last card in our deck. Because we're up a game. This is only game two. Could have done that, Corvus. I was just sitting there like... I was kind of checked out of the game, to tell you the truth. Alright, we're gonna... 10, 20, 30, 42, 10, 20... 40, yeah, we're just, we're dead. There's a cap on tokens. Yeah, Corvus, you were right. I mean, I should have, like, should have attacked, then passed, but then hopefully just won. But I had, I had it checked out of there. Because we're going to win the game. We're going to win the matchup no matter what. Had we been in, like, had I not been streaming and been in a challenge, we'd have done it right. Okay, so now that they are seen Delvers, I do want some decays. Um, hmm. uh, we'll take this. Um, I want some decays, but I don't really know what else I want to take out. Maybe I'll just take out these thought seasons and try to be a little more aggressive on the play. I'll right, we'll try this. 142 viewers, guys. Thank you, everybody, for coming and hanging out. My name is Dylan Hovey, and you want it on my stream. I am a sponsored streamer with the Card Hoarder Network, and uh, you can find all of my YouTube videos from previous streams below. Uh, if you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. It, uh, it's the best way to hook me up. And uh, if you're not, just being here is fun. I appreciate that. I hope everyone has a good, good day and a good week. Alright, so we're going to go do our cube draft as soon as this match is over. The boss is ready. I only got one more game left. My opponent's only got two more minutes, honey. We have a Serum Visions on top. Why does the Stream Decker do that? Just click on the Stream Decker item. Like, the Stream Decker should be... No, the Stream Decker isn't even my... For this Delver. So I kind of want to take this Delver because it's going to be able to flip and the Delver is like how we're going to lose this game in the amount of time that our opponent has. 151 viewers. Uh, Teener? We're going to definitely um, our Cody Brogen. We're definitely going to restart Moto before our draft. Um, Holy Sarcasm. Nice. Uh, Snuff. Snuff Kiss then, thank you, and Crater Dome. Appreciate all the follows. Okay, so there's that, and the Polluted Delta. All right, I'm gonna fetch a basic forest and play this Scavenging News, because I don't think my opponent's gonna be able to delve for Tassiger next turn. If we play Scavenging News, we can at least beat like his entire graveyard. Oh, he's got four cards, so he is gonna be able to play Tasker. I can't add. Bloodstained Mire, Tessie Gray. Okay. All right, Tracker is good. So I know five cards. I still don't really wanna play a naked Tracker. So let's play this. I should've saved the fetch land. Again, it was not thinking. I think they'll unban Bloodbraid Elf. Like, I think I think you'll have Blood Raid Elf in there. I think that's all they'll unban. Like, Jace is too good. 
yeah, J Jace is just like, Jace is just really good. And that card will just ruin games. And like, Jace will completely push out, like, black green decks will not exist if Jace is in the format. Even if they have Blood Bray Elf. Because, like, the turn four Jace doesn't win you the game. The, um, the turn, uh, what was I going to say? The turn eight Jace just ends the game. So I get Temple Guard. Eat this land. Um, yeah, I think I'm still just going to play... Play this guy. Get a clue. And I might as well just attack for... I don't think I'm going to block this Tassiger. Trying to play like this would be a real game here. Yeah, BBE can come off. But that's pretty much it. So let's hope this Tasker. If this the problem is if this Tasker flips. Or this this Delta yeah, if the Tasker flips, that would be weird. Okay. Do I want a ghost quarter myself? to get another clue. What am I doing next turn? I guess I don't want to ghost quarter myself because I want to be able to like traverse. If I draw a land, I can traverse for like a Tarmogoyf. You think Mox? No, Mox was the most egregious card. Thoughts guard. Mox was the most egregious card in the list and it was not particularly close. We might have to like escalate, like double escalate and double eat. But if we double escalate and double eat, then we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, so let's escalate with three modes. Let's go here, here, here. We might, so we're probably gonna miss with this. Um, with this, whatever it is, um, with this brutality. Okay, so then the last card is is it static caster steam vents, which we already know. Okay. So now we'll eat here, and then I'll eat my tracker. And I'm actually going to block because blocking gains me for life and Snapcaster terminate. Okay. Gosh, we might lose this. Golgari Grave Troll. Ban on BBB is a joke. Yeah, I mean, Ban on Bubba Elf is a joke right now. For sure. Dude, we are we're gonna lose this match. I can What do I have? What do I have in do I have a tasker? So traverse, go scorer, play tasker, play a little grim flare. Yeah, that's the plan. So let's traverse. Like this is also the right play to do. It's not the play that's just gonna win us the game because our opponent's gonna time out, but. Hopefully we didn't mill over our basic swamp. Let's keep delirium. One, two, three, four. Okay, play this. And then play the ring flare. And then our opponent loses. All right, let's go. All right, I am going to, let me sit here and change my camera. I'm going to go to the personal camera. I'm gonna restart Modo and just make a Facebook post. 
And then Megan is going to grab. Do you want to grab a, do you want to sit in that chair or do you want to sit in this chair? Okay. Sure. All right, Meg. It is all you. What's that? Come on over. Stone Forge Mystic would be like okay, but Umazawa's JJ is would like dominate some matchup and be absolutely useless in the post format. 